Hello, Tungsten Miner here. Last time I was talking about the basics of Tinker's Construct, and this time I want to jump back in to talking about the smeltery. This is going to be probably the reason why most people pull up Tinker's Construct. I mean, all the rest of this stuff is good. The tools are awesome. That's all super cool. But for early game or doubling, there's nothing that can beat the smeltery. So the smeltery starts with the smeltery control, and uh, I'm going to put mine over here. And next I've got uh, a seared tank, which is where we're going to put our fuel that runs the thing. So I'll put two of those down, one on either side. Um, you can use seared glass as part of the walls. That's just another one of your options. Um, but mostly you're going to wind up using uh, seared bricks to define both the floor, and it has to be three by three on the floor, and then you have to have each of the sides closed in by some kind of smeltery block. So in this case, I've got the tanks over here, I've got the controller here, I've got smeltery glass here, I've got plain old bricks here, all of those are viable options for the walls. And then finally, I'm going to use smeltery drains as this side. So now I've got a complete smeltery, and you can see the controller has indicated that it's complete by lighting up. Now you can keep going. You can make these things actually quite a lot bigger. So for example, let me go ahead and take some of these seared bricks here and just add on another layer. Actually, I'm going to leave that block empty just for now. Okay, so when I click on this controller, it shows you the interface for your smeltery. This is where your solid materials are going to go in order to get melted down. Once they're melted, this is a liquid inventory to show you what liquids you've got in your tank. And this shows you your fuel level. Now for smelteries, the only kind of fuel is lava. So I'm just going to take my lava bucket and fill that tank up. Four buckets per tank. Now that I've got it all fueled up, you can see in here the fuel is up to four millibuckets. If I take this last brick and I complete this second level here, the controller is going to notice that automatically and it's going to give me more room. So you notice it added another three by three chunk. And I can keep going. I could make this, uh, not exactly sure what the top limit is, but it's quite large. Uh, and so you can get more and more and more levels and smelt lots of things all at once. That does use up a lot of fuel, of course, but uh, you can do a lot of work at the same time. Uh, on the front here, I've got these drains. In order for the drains to work, you need a couple of extra things. Uh, first, you need seared faucets on all of the drains, or they won't pour out. And that's just an extra little block you toss on the front there. Then you need the thing you're going to pour things out into. My standard configuration is to use two casting basins and a casting table. So I'll talk a bit about what these guys all do. But first, in here, I've got a bunch of ores. I've got a bunch of gold, copper, tin. So copper and tin are added by Tinker's Construct. I've got iron ore, which is just vanilla iron ore. I've got ardite and cobalt, both added by Tinker's Construct. And I've got obsidian. Uh, the other ore that I forgot to add to my chest uh, is aluminum ore. And uh, I just happen to have a bunch of mods that all add their own aluminum ore, but this is the kind you get from Tinker's Construct. So I'll toss that in there too. Um, so the way this works, let's say I found myself nine chunks of iron ore. I can bring it to my smeltery and just drop it in here. And immediately, if I've got fuel, it's going to start using the fuel to heat the iron ore. And you can see the little progress indicator going up little by little as the iron ore melts. So I'm just going to fast forward to the point where this is all done. Okay. All the iron ore is melted. And now I've got molten iron in my smeltery. Melted iron is in liquid, and I can fly up a bit and actually see it in there. If I were to go stand in there, I would actually get injured. It is quite hot. Uh, and you can see I started off with nine chunks of ore, but now I've got 18 ingots worth of iron. So you double the amount of ore that you get. 
The way that you get it back out again from being molten back to something useful is through these faucets. If I right click on the faucet, it's going to start pouring out the molten iron into the casting basin. And it's going to fill it up with nine buckets worth of whatever happens to be in this basin. But like other fluid systems in different parts of Minecraft, any given block can only have one kind of fluid in it. So if I didn't have nine ingots worth of stuff, or if I had nine ingots worth of different stuff in there, which is, you know, as you can imagine, very easy to do, this would only fill up with however many buckets worth were available of the first kind, and that's it. That's as far as it would go. And it would stay liquid forever until you filled it up with the rest. So you can't get a partial casting out of one of these things. So really be quite careful and deliberate when you're clicking on these faucets and make sure you really do have what you think you do. So you know, I can double check and say, okay, yeah, I've got another nine ingots worth, which means I know for sure if I came over here and hit this other faucet, I'd get all of that metal back out again. So now I've got my block of iron. Toss that over there. That's going to come out. Now, you can melt any standard metal this way, and you can melt each metal individually this way, but the other really nifty thing that you can do is get different ore combinations and then wind up with an alloy. Um, first, though, let me go ahead and talk about uh, one other thing. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, so before I get too far along on, on the... Uh, on the various ores there. I'm gonna melt a little bit of gold and I'm gonna make myself a casting. Now the way this works is um, you take some object that you want a casting of. So for example, if I want an ingot casting, I can start with a brick because it's the same shape and I can right click this casting table. And now that brick is just gonna sit in the casting table and wait. And once that gold has melted, I'll be able to pour out one ingot's worth over top of the brick to make basically what's a template for a smeltery. Okay, so gold's really soft, it melts quickly. And now I've got two ingots worth, so I'm gonna make a casting of this brick. So one right click is gonna get me the brick back again, a second right click is gonna get me the template back again, the cast back again. And I went ahead and made myself a stone pickaxe head so I can show there's lots of different ways to get um, castings. Wait a minute. I thought I had two. Oh, I guess gold. Huh, interesting. There's another material that you can use, uh, and that's the one that you often want to use, but I haven't talked about making alloys yet. Uh, so we'll go ahead and melt that. Yeah, and you can see how much more quickly gold is melting. Um, it doesn't tell you the temperature levels here, but um, if you look it up in NEI, I think, uh, you can see got a lot of mods installed. Here it is. It'll show you the temperature at which it melts, and so you can get a sense of how much fuel it's going to wind up using to do the melting. Okay, there we go. Now we've got two ingots of gold, and I can make another casting. So each casting in gold requires two ingots worth of material, but uh, there's another metal you can use called aluminum brass that actually takes less material. Uh, it's one ingot per casting. So anyway, now that I've got this casting, I can take my ingot cast, for example, throw that on there, and now let's make some alloys. There's a whole bunch of different alloys. Um, the simplest one to make is going to be bronze. And so I want three pieces of copper and one piece of tin. And any amount in this ratio will work fine. Uh, so it doesn't have to be ore. It could be just ingots or it could be nuggets or whatever you got. So I'm going to toss those in there. And let's wait for them to melt. And that's the tin. It has a lower melting point. And we can see there are two in ingots worth of tin. And the copper has got a slightly higher melting point. So that'll take just a second longer. And you notice the tin went away and was replaced with molten bronze. Now I put eight ingots worth of metal, right? Three ore of copper and one ore of tin. And if you double that, it's gonna give you eight. So I didn't add any mass 
here. It's the same mass, but it's now mixed and made bronze. Now, this only works because this is one of the few combinations that is meant to work. If you put any arbitrary quantities of things in there, it isn't necessarily going to behave the way you want it to. Uh, so let me, for example, make a pickaxe head. And now I've got a bronze pickaxe head in addition to my stone one. So I made my cast, now I've got my cast, then I poured some bronze into it, and I got the mold back into the bronze pickaxe. So you can make all of the same sorts of things that you could make out of, um, uh, out of wood or stone or whatever else on the, uh, the part builder. You can make the same things with the smeltery, except you need the smeltery for anything that needs to be melted first. So basically any metals. Um, let's talk a little bit about what happens when things go wrong. So I'm going to take a little bit of gold and I'm going to take, oh, I don't know, some of this iron here and we'll drop that into our casting table and melt it right on top of that bronze. So we'll give this a moment to melt and then see what we get. Okay, so the first bit has melted. We've got some gold, but you can see it's stacked on top of the bronze. They didn't mix because that's not one of the valid combinations. And this is just how uh, therm uh, how Tinker's Construct handles that situation. And we can see the iron is getting real close now. And once it melts, it likewise is just going to get stacked on top. So now I've got six ingots here and four ingots there and nine ingots there. And what am I going to do? Well, got some choices. If I tried to pour it out into here, the six ingots is on the bottom right? That bronze is only six ingots worth and it's on the bottom. So if I poured it out into this casting basin, it's going to partly fill the casting basin and stop because that's all the bronze that there is. And I'll kind of be stuck because in order to get this to fully solidify into a block of bronze, I need to get to nine ingots. It will just stay here in this melted form forever if I don't have a full casting basins worth. So my first choice in trying to fix this mess is to go ahead and add some more bronze. Now it will be smart and take the three extra ingots of bronze and melt them down and let me pour them through even though they won't be on the bottom anymore because that thing's already got bronze in it and it knows that's what I'm looking for. The second choice I have is that since I have full four ingots here, I can go grab my mold for my ingots, toss them on my casting table, and just pour out one ingot of gold at a time. I don't have to use the casting basin. This is a lot slower because I'm going one by one by one, but it's just as effective and it'll work just fine. So I can partly fix my problem just by grabbing one ingot at a time. And ultimately, now that I've got my four ingots out, I should be able to look back here and say, yeah, I've only got molten iron. I have an extra casting basin, so I'll go ahead and do that. And now, in order to clear the rest of this, I could go grab some more copper and tin, or I can just break this casting basin. And now it's gone, all the extra metal's gone. I've wasted some materials, but at least now my uh, smeltery is clean and clear and empty, and I've got all the extra stuff out of it that I didn't have a use for. So. Choices, 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 right? Um, you can do any of those things. They'll work perfectly fine. Um, what you can't do is actually just break the smeltery and then build it again because the controller is going to remember what was in there. So you'll have to use one of these other techniques in order to get rid of stuff. Uh, let me, speaking of getting rid of stuff, clear out my inventory here. The last thing to talk about is this book. Like the other two books, this one is super, super useful and tells you everything you're going to need to remember but won't quite be able to remember about uh, casting. So this tells you how to build a smeltery, shows you what all the parts are, tells you exactly how to deal with it, and uh, how to do all the kind of pouring and you know casting whatnot. Shows you your different alloys. I refer to this actually quite often if I want to come back and I can't quite remember the recipe for something. Aluminum brass, by the way, is three pieces of aluminum and copper. And it's the other material that you can make those um, casts out of. And it requires one ingot. 
per cast instead of two. So it's actually a good substitute, and especially if you can find aluminum um, in your world more easily than gold. It's a great substitute. Here are some of the other liquids that you can make in your uh, casting, in your smeltery. Blood is any creature that gets dumped in there is going to create a little bit of blood. Um, one word of warning, bats count, right? They're creatures. If they get in there and there's liquid hot metal at the bottom of it, then the bats will take damage, they will eventually die, and they will add just a teeny bit of blood on top of your nice metal. So be sure to drain off any hot metals that you're working with when you're done so that you don't wind up with blood in your <laughs> smeltery. Uh, you can toss emeralds or villagers. Don't do that. Melt the emeralds uh, into there and get liquefied emeralds. You can get glue by melting down horses. Uh, slime is um, something actually you can't get through the smeltery, but you can uh, get it through... Um, slime islands, and uh, I'll get to that in a little while. You can finally also melt down ender pearls and get liquid ender. Um, there are a couple of other mods that use this stuff that it makes it easier to get your hands on it. The only good thing that you can do with this, um, I'll talk about later, is you can make, um, uh, gosh, uh, and end, end, endstone um, out of uh, ender pearl and... I think obsidian. Um, let's keep going. We'll, we'll, we'll see the recipe in here for just a minute. Um, making one of these smelteries, you start by making grout. Uh, get yourself some sand and some gravel, mix it together. You'll get two pieces of grout. Take that, toss it into a furnace, craft four of them together. You get yourself the regular seared bricks. All the other parts are made out of some combination of seared bricks and glass. And you can come and just look up what the exact recipe is, but they all basically use the same materials. Uh, brownstone is an interesting substance. You run faster on it. So you take some gravel, pour some liquid tin on there. It's one nugget's worth of liquid tin, so it's not like a whole ingot's worth. And you'll get one of these brownstone blocks, and you can make roads and pavers and all sorts of cool stuff out of them that uh, helps your character run just a little faster. Molten glass, you put sand in your smeltery and it melts down into glass. Uh, you get one block of glass per one block of sand. You can put stone in there, uh, just regular cobblestone, melt down to seared stone. Um, I think you get one bucket's worth per cobblestone, so you need nine of them to produce one block of seared stone. Uh, resonant ender on obsidian, hey, I remembered, uh, will get you end stone. So nice if you aren't quite ready to go to the end yet, but you have some need of endstone. Uh, you can make a glue ball by just pouring out glue onto a casting table. Okay, and that's it for that book. Um, also another one to keep around. I find I keep turning back to it all the time, especially for the alloy recipes of how much exactly goes into which kind of metal and so on. Um, next up, I'm going to start getting into... A lot of the other things that Tinker's Construct adds, um, and there's a whole bunch of them, and I'm going to take a walk through all of the various tools and weapons and things that you can make and demonstrate how they work and what their special abilities are. But for now, if you like this video, hit like. If you want to know when that next video is ready, hit subscribe, and I will talk to you later.